the, the newest research that we found that is so important, obviously, is that whole discovery of the endocannabinoid system. Um, and, you know, here we have, we've, through all this research on cannabis, the scientists in looking at this and trying to figure out why does it work there and why does, you know, how come it affects so many things? Aspirin is a wonder drug in many ways and is used for different things, you know, pain, and we give it for heart patients to kind of, you know, uh, to prevent problems or, and prevent strokes. Um, but here's cannabis that's even wider. I mean, just so many things it's used for. How can that be? And here we learn about the endocannabinoid system. We have receptors throughout our body. Um, you know, first discovered in 1988 in our brain, and they called them the CB1 receptors. After that, the, the next discovery was that, that we have, we make a, cannabi a cannabinoid, called, and they called it anandamide, the first one that was discovered. Um, that was great news. That was 92. The receptors were discovered in, in the CB1 receptors discovered in 1988 and the anandamide in 1992. And then shortly after that, they discovered that, my goodness, we have more receptors throughout our immune system, and they call them CB2 receptors. The more we learn about that, we've got them throughout our body. Then pretty soon we learn we've got more cannabinoids in our body called endogenous cannabinoids, meaning made by the body, or a shorter version, endocannabinoids. So here we are as humans, we've got these molecules in our body and receptor sites specifically for those molecules to fit in that will start a chain of events, different physiological processes in the body. And a researcher in Israel, excuse me, in Italy, Vincenzo Di Marzo, uh, several years back, was trying to describe how important this endocannabinoid system was, and he said it helps us eat, sleep, relax, protect, and forget. And I'm not sure if that covers everything, but it covers a heck of a lot, <laughs> and it explains a lot. Um, I think you know the eating we all know uh, helps with the munchies. You know, even the the drug. Uh, People who, who go along with the drug pro prohibition will even give you the fact that it does help with nausea and vomiting and gives people's, the, people the munchies. Um, the sleeping, it's a wonderful sleep medication. I've got an old nursing textbook, a pharmacy uh, book, uh, and I looked up cannabis in it, and, and there it was, and it was in bold that it was good for pain and induces sleep. They were the main things they thought were really helpful for cannabis back then. Um, and sleep is obviously very important. Again, in, in nursing and in hospitals, that's a huge issue for patients. Uh, you know, you don't get good sleep, you don't function. Um, and especially for people who go night after night after night without sleep. But the relaxing is a huge issue in so many ways. Relaxing the anxious person, calm down, relax. The muscles for those pa patients who are having spasms for chronic pain, even migraines when you're thinking the um, blood vessels are spasming, relax the, uh, the vessels. Crohn's disease or irritable bowel syndrome, relax the bowels. Uh, you know, people just do better in, in that regard. Um, forget, the, the ability to forget is an important one. I, I, you know, one of the classic normal forgetting that women need is childbirth pain. Uh, you kind of think that if they really remembered how much it hurt, they wouldn't get pregnant again. <laughs> so it, it could be really good birth control if, if our system wasn't working to forget that and kind of be willing to go through it again for the sake of a baby. Uh, but in modern times, this whole endocannabinoid system, which is, helps us stay in balance, helps us deal with stress when we're faced with abnormal psychological stress, trauma, and end up with post-traumatic stress uh, symptoms, the nightmare, the typical, the best example of that being our veterans who are looking at war, either harming other people and knowing they might be killing someone, or they are killing, they have killed someone, or being wounded, or seeing their buddy blown to bits. I mean, they see all the horrors of war. You can't come back unaffected. Mm -mm. So, you know, soldiers found out a long time ago in Vietnam that... That's why I don't talk about patients. <laughs> when you talk about this, it reminds you of specific patients that you've known? Yeah, yeah, you can think of a lot. What they've gone through? 
Yeah, I mean, they, you know, we do know. We know that um, Vietnam War and now with Afghan, the war in Afghanistan and, and Iran that finally, uh, Iraq that finally ended, that we're losing more soldiers from suicide when they come home from suicide than have died over there. And it's because of what they have to deal with. Face the fact that, you know, they've killed, didn't even know who it was they killed, um, or, you know, living with the injuries that they have. But it, I think the most is that they will always have those memories of what they've seen. The forgetting is very important for them to help uh, make sure they don't. Oh, they can, they can get past it. I mean, the, the nightmares keep them going, the flashbacks, it's, it, it obviously is devastating. I mean, when you're looking at someone willing to, to kill themselves, and unfortunately, the system now for veterans is, their answer is to give them a lot of medications, which we've seen the veterans, we've heard from the veterans, they, it, it's, the, it's not helping. It makes them feel even worse. And then there are side effects of the medications they get, because there are some pretty potent toxic medications. Um, so that, that forgetting is hugely important for anyone who's been through a bad trauma. Um, and then finally, the protect. Uh, the protection on, on the endocannabinoid system is really wide. I mean, like I said, they found the CB1 receptors. Uh, CB2 receptors are kind of with the immune system. Hmm, this is part of our immune system. Gee, you know, I mean, we need our immune system is working every day to keep us. We all know, you know, cancer patients or people who go through chemotherapy get put in these isolation rooms to protect them from anything that could kill them. Uh, you know, and you've got to go in gloved and gowned and all this and masked up so you don't get them sick. So our immune system, I mean, just helps us, you know, tackle day-to-day -day problems, uh, bacteria, viruses, you know, fungal things, anything that could, could hurt us. Um, so it, it protects us in helping with the immune system. It's an antioxidant. It's an anti-inflammatory. Uh, it works as a um, neuroprotectant, protecting our nerve cells to actually help regenerate nerve cells. And we're looking at, is this a problem? I mean, for some of our diseases, Dr. Ethan Russo coined the term the clinical endocannabinoid deficiency as a problem, that maybe some people whether you've been overstressed and your endocannabinoid system just can't work as well as it could, or you were born with one that wasn't quite functioning up to par, whatever it be, it might be something that your system isn't working adequately, and with that, if it can't work, you end up seeing problems. And one of, some of them are possibly autoimmune diseases, like multiple sclerosis. The, you know, and, and that's just nerves anywhere in the body, which is why people have different symptoms with multiple sclerosis. But those nerves, the myelin sheath, kind of like the insulation on it, your electric cord, it um, disintegrates, disrupted, whatever. And so their electric system is shorting out in different places, which would make for bad, you know, uneven movements, uncoordination, and just the body not working well. And here, can the endocannabinoid system is a neuroprotectant. Part of that job would be to make sure those nerves are healthy. And, and functioning up to par. Um, the other part of protection is we're learning that, you know, we all have cancer cells. We've known that. Humans always have cancer cells, some aberrant cells in our system that aren't working right, and, and the, the hope is that they never get together and literally get a cancer going somewhere, whether it be a, a, a leukemia, some kind of blood cancer, or a, or a tumor-type cancer that, that we know about. Here, the endocannabinoid system, if it's working right, it actually kills those cancer cells. Perfect chemotherapy. We give chemotherapy now, and it's designed to kill the cancer cells, but the chemotherapy doesn't know you're a cancer cell, you're a good one. So the hope is it kills most of the cancer cells and not too many good cells. Here you've got the endocannabinoid system and the marijuana plant, cannabis plant, the only plant with those same kind of chemicals, and, and they know how to kill a cancer cell. I mean, it's, and the research is basic research at this point, but it's showing that it will kill the tumors. Um, and I think that, kind of going back in time again with the NIDA, it's National Institute on Drug Abuse, its whole purpose to study the negative effects. And so years back in Richmond, they were doing, trying to see how it would cause cancer, lung cancer in, and I, pardon me if I forget, whether it be mice or rats, but you know, some kind of rodent. And in doing the studies, instead of killing, you know, the, the rats with the cannabis were doing better. The tumors were shrinking. 
buried the science, you know, shut the program, no more funding for that. We're not supposed to find benefits, we're supposed to find negative effects. Um, so th this whole idea about the endocannabinoid system, we're excited about it. Our next conference series is going to focus on that, and, and my hope is to attract a lot of healthcare professionals to this out of their own professional responsibility. This is new science on the human body. You know, if you're a healthcare professional, you have to know this. It's not about a plant cannabis, it's about this system in the body. And frankly, once you understand the system in the body, and the fact that if it went, something went tilt, how do you fix it? We've got a, a diabetic, the pancreas isn't making insulin, we give them insulin. You know, we've got a patient with a thyroid problem, the, the thyroid gland isn't making thi um, thyroxine as it should, we give them Synthroid. We give them a chemical to, to help replace that. So if the endocannabinoid system isn't working well, it would make sense. We'd want to give them some cannabinoids. And here is cannabis, Mother Nature saying, I got it for you. <laughs> you know, come and have it. So it, it's just, it's a, healthcare professionals have to wake up to that. And again, you, you hope that maybe if they'll look at it from that angle and really wake up and kind of go, oh my God. I, you know, I've just, I just want to be there and watch some of these healthcare professionals and, and hope to see like a light bulb go off in their head or something to just kind of go, I get it. You know, I get it now. And, and I should be advocating for this. You know, what, what is this prohibition about? I mean, instead of people saying, well, it's against the law, we can't. We need to really start saying, why? Why is it against the law? This is the stupidest. And it's not just stupid, it's harmful, it's cruel, it's, it's criminal um, to, to prohibit a plant, you know, and I even say any plant, it's, it's contrary to be destroying a plant, to set out, you know, with, uh, our country has a mission, you know, in terms of we've got our law enforcement and, and the DEA, all these people just literally, you know, they score if they can find some marijuana and destroy it, um, to somehow think that that's a great thing. I've often said if you're going to destroy a plant, I don't really think we should be destroying plants, but if you picked any one, I'd pick poison ivy. You know, I just don't know what it's good for, but you know, go after something like that. But here it is, this wonderful plant, and then of course your patients who are trying to do it, then the next thing you know, they're going to court being charged with manufacturing drugs, and it's like, no, just growing a plant here. Um, it, the, the whole thing is so insane, and, and yet everything's so simple. I mean, what patients at a time, I think what we're trying to do is just bring the truth. And, we've, and, you know, people, it's not that we worry about research. We've said that's been another um, kind of push we've had to try to tell people. The whole idea about patients out of time is saying this is an old drug. It's been tested more than any of our new pharmaceuticals. We, we would have known if it killed somebody. So we know it can't kill. We know it doesn't do this much harm. These new drugs that are out on the market, you know, you kind of think they're safe enough. Supposedly they went through enough studies to to do that, but how many drugs have been pulled from the market? Because too many people have tried it, and now all of a sudden we're seeing the liver damage, we're seeing the heart attacks, we're seeing uh, osteoporosis medications now, and we're seeing that, oh my God, if you stay on them, your bones break because it gets your bones too, too uh, hard and brittle. So here you've got this old, old medicine, and it's that safe, it's not gonna be any surprises, it should be available for everybody.